I'm glad that at that age, I was able to be like, you need to follow something that feels passionate to you. And production very much was. This is the Techsploder podcast, conversations with tech professionals about being human in a binary world. Episode 19, Sarah Lane. Techsploder is made possible by the financial support of our patrons like Tay Quartermain. What's up, Tay? If you like what you hear, head on over to patreon.com slash Jason Howell to support the show directly. And thank you for making independent podcasting possible. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Techsploder podcast. I'm your host, Jason Howell, and today I am energized. I had a fantastic weekend in the woods did some work, like just feel all energized and ready to talk openly with a really cool person, someone who I've worked with a lot over the years, Sarah Lane. She's a veteran technology media personality. I'm sure you've heard of her with over two decades of experience. Sarah has been, I would say, a pretty notable figure in online but also offline video technology journalism. She hosted the Screensavers and Attack of the Show on Tech TV before you know video on the internet was really a thing. As that changed, Sarah worked at Revision 3. She worked at the Twit Podcast Network. I worked with her there pretty closely. And TechCrunch, where she produced and hosted countless shows, also managed the team there, the video team. Today, you can actually find Sarah every day co-hosting the Daily Tech News Show, as well as the hilarious Have Such a Good Day show. I highly recommend you check that out. And even more recently, Sarah launched the Apple Vision Show podcast, where she discusses all things Apple, which is very apropos uh, because this is Apple's biggest product week of the year. So without further ado, here's my conversation kind of in process as we join it with Sarah Lane. You know, it's it's kind of like some of the other podcasts that you do. I know that you do the um, Have Such a Good Day, such a where good day. Mm-hmm. you have the opportunity to just like talk about things that aren't like locked into the tech news cycle and... In yeah, in fact, it, in in fact it really isn't, you know, it, anything it, at all in that regard, right? N- not at all. No. Yeah. Um, it's just, honestly, uh, my friend, Heather Frank, who's also my co-host, uh, she lives up in Humboldt County in California, which is not anywhere near LA County where I am. And we haven't been in the same place for many years. And we started the podcast when we were neighbors and we were like, yeah, you know, it was a video podcast. It was so easy. Um, and then, you know, life moved around and we sort of said, yeah, we can't be in the same room anymore. So let's just make it audio. Um, and it's like our weekly hangout sesh Mm -hmm. that is a show also. Mm -hmm. It's great because it's like, I want to hang out with my friend. So, for, yeah. guaranteed for an hour it's as if we were on the phone being like so what's new <laughs> but it's podcast that's that's kind of i feel like we've started um so hello welcome sarah lane <laughs> hello <laughs> so sometimes this is how it happens with this show i love it it's like we just like do pre-show and it, and it merges right into the show um this that tells me something about kind of like the beauty of podcasting as a platform, because like there, there are shows like, like, you know, one of your other shows that you co-host daily tech news show, very rigid, very structured, very um, kind of specific to what is in the, the technology news zeitgeist in this moment. Let's report on it, talk about it, that sort of stuff. But there's this whole other category of podcasts that is so engaging that is really at its core, just two or three or four, Four people who get along really well, have a shared interest, and are just like talking as if they were yeah. sitting in a corner of a party about something. Yeah. And it turns out that kind of that kind of conversation is really engaging for people who like you, who follow you, or who just like that topic uh, or that randomness to begin with. And that's that's great to have that in your arsenal. Totally. Yeah. I I listen to a lot of podcasts that I mean I listen to this like weightlifting podcast. I don't lift weights, Jason, at all. (laughs) I actually have some weights behind me, but, uh, you know, that's, I just, I'm not. Sometimes when you're listening to the podcast, you're like, I just feel like I need to do this right now. I'm not doing it because I'm like, yeah, I'm one of you guys. It's like four guys who talk about protein, (laughs) you know, but then they also sort of veer off into, you know, their family lives and just kind of, 
who they are as people. And yeah. I don't even know that I would have a whole lot in common with them, but I like the podcast. I just think it's like, oh, this is a good hour of, you know, I'll take a walk and, and listen to the weightlifting pod. So, <laughs> I don't even know how like I found fun. it. I couldn't yeah, even tell you. That's so curious. That's so interesting. It was probably just some random like, oh, hey, you should check out this episode because in it somebody some, talks about yeah, blah, blah, blah. There was probably something. And then something. you do and you're like, whoa. There are I, – I also follow a, quite a few sub stacks or you know, newsletters in general and podcasts are being recommended in there all the time. You know, So it's like mm. somebody that I'm you know, reading recommends somebody else and then their sub stack recommends a podcast and I end up listening to an episode and it doesn't always stick. But there mm. are times where I'm like, I like it. I like this. Follow. Mm. Subscribe. So absolutely. You know, yeah. Podcasting also just in general is such an interesting, you know, we, we have the, um, we have the, the experience of, of so much time in the industry to probably recognize this on a personal level, but you dip in and out. It's like, it, it, it's like different moments in my life called for different podcasts that I was fascinated with at the time that I don't listen to anymore. They're still going strong. It's still the same people. It's still awesome, I'm sure. But my interests have gone yep. into a different direction. And mm -hmm. that's kind of the beauty of it. Like there's infinite directions to go. And yeah, totally. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, you mentioned Daily Tech News Show, which is my bread and butter. And yeah. it's a, you know, it's a daily show Monday through Friday. So it obviously takes up the majority of my time mm -hmm. and I love tech, you know, I always have, but I, and I, I listen to some tech podcasts just because it's helpful to me, but mm -hmm. there, I mean, there are days, you know, Saturday morning, for example, I'm like, I'm doing something different, you know, mm -hmm. I've just, I want to think about different things uh, because we're all, you know, not siloed into any one thing. <laughs> yeah, give, give, give yourself Much a break. If you're doing tech news five days a week, I mean, and by the way, I understand what that feels like. I've done, you know, I've worked with yeah, you. you know. Yeah, uh, doing the daily, uh, the daily news cycle, uh, CNET, and everything like that. Not having that on a daily basis, I think, has actually, to a certain degree, been kind of good for my mental health. Like, it's nice for me to like not feel the pressure of that constant. You know, it's kind of a grind. It can be a grind when there's like every single day, yeah. gotta get it down. You know, there are there yeah. are. I mean, every day is different because you know you for wake sure. up and the world is different than it was yesterday. But there are days where I feel like it's Groundhog Day. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I just, I just mm -hmm. okay, wake up, do the same thing. Got to hit these things. If I, it's 10 a.m. and I am not at this point in my day, I'm running behind where we go live. I mean, it it is helpful to me because I am best with a uh, rigid routine or else I just, yeah, I don't know, spin off yeah. into the wind. But I on that one. But it, you know, it is a grind. It's a grind. It's yeah. a job, you know, it's which, it's, which is not to say yeah. that it's a bad thing. A, no. a grind is not inherently a bad thing. It just, it illuminates the work, the hard work that you and Tom and the rest of the team put in on a regular basis on a show like daily tech news show. It's just required of that format. And it thankfully y'all yeah. are professionals who have done this for <laughs> so you. long that I think from the outside looking in, it might look might look easy, but I know I know firsthand how much work and how much time you and, do. Yeah, and, you, you uh, know and better education than anybody. it takes to do that. You mm -hmm. know, so I highly respect that you guys are still still pulling strong on the daily routine. It's 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 tough. It, uh, one of um, my co-hosts, Rob Dunwood, uh, who joined mm -hmm. the team, he's regular with me on Thursdays, and and he and I yeah, also tag team on Daily Tech Headlines. Yeah, he's super super dope, dude. Um, he had posted on threads the other day, something along the lines of, I was having a conversation with a friend and explaining what it took to put together, you know, a five minute tech episode. Mm -hmm. And the friend was just like, Oh, I thought it was like, you just talk for five minutes and maybe there's another five where you upload mm -hmm. it. And he's like, no, it's like four hours of work it's minimum crazy. because you're, yeah. you know, it's research. Then it's writing then it's, you know, the performance part of it. Then it's editing. 
because you have to take out all the mistakes. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. if, if you're Tom Merritt, you never make a mistake, but the rest of us do. And, <laughs> right. you know, and then the rest the of us shame. mortals do. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, and I was like, yeah, it's, 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 uh, I mean, for, I don't know, how long have I been doing daily tech news show since 2017? So we're going on yeah. six years. Wow. And because of our schedule, having lunch with somebody during the week is not something I can do. Now, that's, I mean, that's true of many jobs. It's not like, oh, wow, you know, all of a sudden I can't have lunch, you know, during the week. Many of us just, you know, we would be in an office anyway, um, not having time to do that. But if somebody will come into town, for example, you know, somebody uh, that doesn't live in LA wants to see me, but they're, you know, only here, you know, between Wednesday and Thursday. And can we, like, we could grab lunch. That would be fun. And I'm like, can't do it. Can't do it. <laughs> Still can't do it because of the shows. Dinner, and 80. people go, oh, yeah. but I thought you went live at one. It's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Someone's that's handing true. you a script, right? And, that's, you know, at, at twelve forty-five, you're like, "All right, thank you." Can for you doing imagine? Yeah, if I was just me. sort of like, "All right, I'm in my seat. What do I do? Tell me what to Stack say." Stack of papers. <laughs> Their past jobs have been a little bit more like that um, yeah. for me, yeah. but but no, now it's. I think also in our. Um, I don't want to say scrappy because I think podcasts have become um, pretty professional, but um, being able to do more with less is mm -hmm. awesome. And we're also working harder as a result. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, yeah. nobody, nobody's going to do my hair ever. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I look like this. <laughs> <laughs> you look great. <laughs> yeah. I, so one thing that's been really hard or, ch Maybe more the better word is more of a challenge, you know that that I'm really stretching into since uh, since not being at Twit anymore is the the daily recognition that it all falls on my lap, that there is no more team necessarily. Like what you were talking about as far as like the 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 amount of time that it takes to do all components, there I can fully admit that there was a time for quite a while at Twit where, Yes, I had to produce content and yes, I had to host, but the second that show was done recording, I was kind of done. Like there's a team there to then take those audio files or video files, put them right. on a timeline, do whatever yeah. they needed to do, publish it, check it, check the feeds, all that kind of stuff. And like for a day like today, Tuesdays at the time of this recording, I do Android Faithful in the evening for the DTNS network as well, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, Great show. And yeah, great show. Yes, enjoy doing that. But mm -hmm. but I mean that show that's an evening show. You know, it used to be when that was all about Android at Twit at seven o'clock. We finished the show. My evening was done. Ah, uh, but now like I'm usually up until ten or eleven in the evening because you know it's it's like an eight to ten hour process to go from beginning of the rundown curation to I can yeah. go to sleep now. And yeah, it's a lot of work. Totally, <laughs> it really is. totally. I I really I um. You know, it's been a while since I've I've had various projects that have come and gone. You know, people people want me to produce their podcasts, yeah, um, here yeah, and I've there. You know, where I'm, you know, I'm just totally behind the scenes. You know, press and record, uh, fix an audio later, adding music. You know, all all the things, running websites. Um, and hmm. uh, there was actually a a show that I ha had been producing called Unfinished Biz at four. I think that started in 2017 as well. Yeah, it did. And 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 just this year the team their hearts just weren't in it anymore. You know, they they just kind of it was an interview show and there mm -hmm. were a lot of really cool guests and um you know, I met a lot of a lot of really interesting people. Not a tech show. Uh, mm -hmm. as a result, a great project and you know, it just finally they decided to, you know, hang up the hat. Which is, yeah, I mean, <laughs> always unfortunate uh, financially for a producer. But for sure. I was like, yeah. you know, yeah, I think it's the right decision. You know, we all just sort of felt like we were just sort of, oh, there it is, yeah, um, is. yeah. We we made fifty nine episodes. Um, they were um, they were great. They were they were they were a fun team. But uh, these sorts of projects come and go. But to your point, Jason, about something being a long process. This project uh, specifically was, um, it was 
heavy on editing because it was a guest, two hosts, sometimes two guests. I don't know if we ever had three guests at once. I think we probably did once. Um, but you know, so you've got, you just got a lot of, you got a lot of cleaning up to do. And it was, it was a heavily produced audio, um, show. And it was really fun for me because it just, I wasn't on the show. You know, it wasn't about me. Nobody even knew I existed. But mm-hmm. behind the scenes, you had to be really, really meticulous about making things. Sorry, my dog wants to wants to be That's annoying okay. Dogs right are now. welcome. Dogs Mine are welcome. Thank you. Too. Thank you. So you were doing the editing on this on this podcast then? Yeah. On a weekly basis? Was this a, an every week? It sort of used thing? to be a bi-weekly show. Then it got pushed to every three weeks. Then uh after COVID hit, it was like, whenever. Um, yeah. <laughs> <you know? laughs> and in the world of podcast, I would say, at least in my experience, once a podcast hits that point where it's like, eh, you know, maybe we'll just do it when when it feels right. Typically, that's kind of like the uh, signals the beginning of the end or at least. A, yeah. yeah. Well, and I, I always tell people to because I will people will pitch well they're not necessarily pitching their podcast to me but saying like here's what i want to do you know maybe we can work together you mm-hmm. know friends of friends will put me in touch with somebody and the sure. first thing i always tell them is how often do you want to do this yep. because if it's just kind of whenever then you're not going to gain you, you, if it's if it's a passion project and that's all you care about then sure make it a right. whenever thing but if it's about building a community uh, finding an audience keeping that audience and having you know the cadence to to do that um, then you have to do something regularly even if it's yep. once a month it has to be once a month you know mm-hmm. if it yeah. goes a People couple of months yeah it you know yeah. like it, you it's know my, build a my, habit Right. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's that, that, that counts for so, 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 so much because otherwise, like you were saying, you just drift off into other podcasts that are, you know, hitting, hitting that nerve that you're looking for. You know, my weightlifting podcast, for example, like if they go away, I don't know, I'll find another one or maybe I won't. It doesn't really affect (laughs) my life, you know, either way. Yeah. Have there been any podcasts that you've discovered along the way that had a back catalog that you were like, oh my God, this is so good. I have to start combing through the back catalog. Um, that's a special, that's a special discovery, by the way. I've had only a few of those. Only a few. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't say anything that's sort of timely news. Not really. Mm, no. For example, no. the daily, I sense. listen to the daily every day. Mm-hmm. even the Sunday uh, episode. And I love that show because it's a great show, but I'm not going to go back a week because the news has already left the building. Yeah. Um, yeah. I also listen to wait, wait, don't tell me one of my favorite shows weekend show. Mm-hmm. If anyone likes a good game show, but also is about like just regular old trivia, current events, and, current yeah. events. It's great. Yeah, it's good. great show. But I'm not going to listen to if I miss a couple weeks, I'm not going back because, the, again, the news has, you know, left the building. Yeah. But um, there are some shows like the uh, uh, the Moth podcast, one of my favorite podcasts, which is uh, for anybody not familiar. It's 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 well, it's not stand up comedy, but it is it's a live show where somebody gets on stage and tells a story. And depending on the episode and the venue and everything, sometimes they have five minutes, sometimes they have 10, you know, sometimes it's, it's a little bit longer. Um, but it is very just, I don't know. I mean, tug at your heartstrings type stuff. Not every, um, monologue, I guess you would call them. Not every monologue is like tear jerky, but many of them are. Uh, poignant stuff. And I mean, I can listen to the moth back catalog forever. And it, it's been going on for a long time. Like I drove my mom uh, back up North. She was visiting LA uh, in March of this year and <laughs> very sadly broke her leg while she was visiting me 24 oh, hours into goodness, the visit. No. Yep. Oh, yep. That stinks. Broke her leg. And oh, um, 
couldn't get on a plane to go home. Uh, she lives up in 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 your neck of the woods, Jason, in Santa Rosa, mm-hmm. California. And um, so I I drove her home. And <laughs> she had to get home eventually. And we listened to the moth for like nine hours on the drive. Oh, that's a and it good was just like, show then. It's a great show. No, it's a great show because it was like yeah. kind of took us out of not a great place that we were in at that yeah. point. Uh, just just funny stories, you know, sometimes sort of, you know, you get you know, get some tears here and there, you know, where one episode, they're usually like 45 minutes uh, mm-hmm. per episode, maybe a little bit shorter. You know, every mm-hmm. time it would end, I'd be like, want to listen to another one? She's like, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I see. Do that's, it. that's the sign. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Perfect podcast experience you found. That, right that's it. Definitely you. one that it, it's very timeless because the stories yeah. don't, they don't, they're, you know, personal people's stories from, from right. all, all walks of life. Yeah. That's a, that's like a question that I like to ask people sometimes is like, what, what is the story that you tell at parties that makes people go, Whoa, no way that happened, you know, to you or whatever. And that, mm-hmm. that makes mm-hmm. a great podcast, right? Because there is no time limit. That's always going to be a fantastic story and, you know, something that someone's going to want to hear. Someone's yeah. want to hear someone tell. Yeah. You know, I even, I, I was actually talking about this to Heather, my co-host on Have Such a Good Day recently that, you know, I know I'm lucky to have, you know, really awesome friends, again, from all walks of life. And, you know, I've, I've, I've met so many people over the years and, and so many of them have that story. And I know it because I know them, but it's like, do they want to write a novel about it? No, that's probably not going to happen, you know, or, uh, or, um, just, just like, do they want to put that out into the world? It's not that they don't, they just don't even consider it. It's just life. But I'm like, that would be a good podcast. (laughs) Well, that's (laughs) what I'm talking about. Like, (laughs) like to write it up, Man, there's a lot of heavy lifting to do that, to to, to mm-hmm. take that story and put it into written word. But a podcast, you're just telling the story the same way you would. Am I giving away too much right now? This has been like on my back catalog list of like, oh, I should do a podcast. And it'll be like, what is the story that you tell at parties? Um, and I'm giving it away. That's all right. Someone else can do something great with it. But um, yeah, it's, it's it's a lower it's lift. my thing. idea too. <laughs> so I, well, you know we, what? I don't think it's we, the, yeah, yeah it's, it's not, it's not the most unique idea. It's, but, but in the, in the world of podcasting, like we're always looking for kind of that avenue to explore, like, because it is all about, you know, even when we're, even when we're talking about technology news, we are also telling a story. It's, you know, I I think at its core, this audio programming in this world that you, you and I have both spent nearly two decades in at this point, um, is really about storytelling and how, how good you can tell the story of the thing that you happen to be talking about. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. 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 Okay, shifting gears just a little bit, I was, uh, you know, I, I do some preparation for this show to kind of get a sense. Ultimately, at the end of the day, the reason I like doing this show is because I get to talk to people who I've worked with, people who I'm friends with and everything, and get to know them even more than I knew them before. And so part of my preparation is kind of, you know, digging through things and like, take a look at LinkedIn and whatever. I'm like, what do I not know about this person? Maybe you and I have talked about this before and I don't recall, but I realized today that you and I share the same alma mater, San Francisco State University, the I Becca didn't program. I know that. Yeah, the Becca program. Maybe, maybe I did know that. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about too. Like, I'm sure it came up. Maybe it didn't, but that's the, for anyone who doesn't know, that's the Broadcast and Electronic Communication Arts program. Becca. Uh, at San Francisco State. I think, I think Becca's called something different now. The last time I oh, checked. Oh, did they change it? Well, because it, it, it was, uh, so yes, Broadcast and Electronic Communication Arts is what Jason and I had both got degrees in, but it yeah. used to be BCA because it wasn't electronic yet. It was just broadcasting and communication. And, and maybe it still is Becca. I, I don't, I'm I don't know. I'm seeing Becca on the, the SFSU okay. uh, website. I think I look, I, I may have looked, I, I'm like part of their alumni, you know, I get newsletters yeah. and th- that yeah. sort of stuff. Um, and I think I had seen some, uh, recent, like, here's what's new in the department. And I was like, oh, that's pretty fancy compared to what we had back in the day. Yeah, I know, right? The facilities are probably. <laughs> we must have a talked about this. I didn't know I, that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, so that's, that's interesting because 
whenever people say, oh, what, you know, where'd you go to college? I say San Francisco State and they go, oh, okay, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, it doesn't really mean anything. Um, it's a big school, uh, right. really big school. Um, and of course, in California, there are a lot of state schools in, you know, mm-hmm. the, um, mm-hmm. the uh, CSU or UC, the, I don't know, I don't have to go into a UC whole Davis. college yeah, a- yeah, explanation yeah. to everybody, but, um, but that department lot. was very specifically about going into TV, maybe radio. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Cinema was sort of a different crowd, but um, but it was it, also music. The, what music, attracted me yeah. to it was was the music production program because I mm-hmm. you know I I believed that after university I was going to end up in a recording studio. That was kind of my my goal. Um, yeah. Didn't, well, I mean, didn't did, quite happen that didn't, way. Didn't, but. didn't you, I mean you you still do that right? Yellow gold. Well. Well, no, I, I still I still work on music. Yeah, I, I produce music for myself. I think my my vision of what my professional career was going to be was yeah. being an engineer or a producer or something like that in a music studio. And well, you know, what turns I, out that's really hard to do and, and make money. You know, immediately it's, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. <laughs> when I started, um, when I started college, I was a math major. Oh, and, really? Yeah. Like, I wasn't even in the College of Creative Arts at that point. Wow. I was just, what? you know, doing under uh, undergrad, you know, for the first, you know, the first year. And took a lot of – I was actually just telling the story the other day. So, if anyone's already heard the story, I'm sorry. But uh, uh, I was – you know, I was I was really good at math in high school. Yeah. And, at, like, I just, like, was easy for me. And it was so hard for other people. And so I was like, me. okay, I yeah. pr- should be a mathematician, you know, like <laughs> go with what So works. that was your goal. I'm going to get a degree in math. Well, be a I didn't mathematician really know what and, that and, meant. And what does that apply to? Yeah. 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 I was like, you know, when you're 17, 18, yeah, you know, it's, it, it's a lot to ask. Uh, you <laughs> totally know, somebody is. like, oh, so this is going to be your career. And I was like, I, I guess, I mean, I'm good at it. You know, I have a gift. And then when I got to college, I was like, Oh, it's getting hard. I'm not that good at it anymore. I'm I'm okay. Like I'm getting B's and C's type thing. And okay, so, so so there's being good at it, but what about enjoying it? Did you enjoy it? Was I enjoyed it? Enjoyable? it I used to enjoy it because I was like, this is just easy. Hmm. I understand the you know the <laughs> it's like solve this. Like I could do it. I was like. You know, like, like I, I mean, I'm not trying to be like, I'm, I was the like best math kid, you know, in the world, but I just didn't have a problem with it. It was easy. You had an aptitude for it. Yeah. Yeah, And it was, I thought it was fun. You know, numbers made sense. It's like, it just Mm -hmm. makes sense. You know, when it's wrong, you know, when it's right, it makes sense. But, um, when it stopped making sense to me, I was like, Mm -hmm. okay, let's think about this. Um, because I don't know what my career path is, and I'm also not that great at it. I was mm-hmm. I was great at it until I wasn't, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, and at that point, I had always loved. I mean, talk about music production. I'd always loved that. I was always the tinkerer kid. Um, always had you know, like a cool stereo, you know, where people were like, what do you even have this for? And I'm like, Ooh, let me show you how we can like, you know, let's pretend that we're, you know, uh, BBC broadcasters. I've got a microphone here. Here we go. Record. Oh, go. Awesome. You know, yeah. that's that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, so that was always something that I thought was fun, but I never really took it seriously. And then at SF state, <clears throat> I decided to move over to the creative arts department um, where I met people that I work with to this day, Roger Chang, also an alumni of oh, SF State. I had no idea. Oh yeah, he Roger and I Chang, were of in course, college. Producer of DTNS. We're and- yeah, we we were in some classes together in college, mm. um, and then uh, I went one way and he went the other way. But then we both worked at Tech TV, and I was like, oh, I know you, and I knew a lot of people at Tech TV that were again coming out of that department. So mm-hmm. so it all worked out. In the end. And sometimes when people say, oh, what, you know, what, what did you go to college for? I say broadcasting. Cause that's Mm -hmm. like, I think that's what it says on my, you know, uh, my diploma. And they go, oh, broadcasting. Okay. Well, that's what you do. So that worked out. (laughs) And I go, yeah. That worked out well for you, didn't it? it? It's it's more complex (laughs) than that. But yeah, it, it, it all did work out. Yeah. Yeah. 
a media department at San Francisco State, and yeah, I have I have good memories of that that whole experience. That was a uh, no. Did you fun. and Some I really cross paths? I wouldn't. I don't think so. I was. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think you were at Tech TV um, prior to my even going to San Francisco State University. I went. Well, thanks for mistaken, calling me out for being an old lady, Jason. No, 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 no. I'm just saying <laughs> we. I think we missed it at SF State. I I yeah. started there at 2002, and I and I graduated 2004. Yeah. So I actually so, started so I, at I, City I, College. I, I was previous and moved to over. You. Mm, got yeah. it. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. How fun. How fun. I, <laughs> I, I really do have fond, very fond memories. And I sometimes talk to people about their college experiences because, you know, I, people have gone all over. Um, yeah. And I think that um, that four years of life, even though it was a long time ago, made the biggest imprint on me by far. Now, like, I couldn't mm. even really tell you what I did in high school, academic-wise. I mean, mm. I knew who my friends mm. were, you know, what we did on Friday sure. nights kind of thing. But sure. it's like, what did we do in high school? Mm. You know, like, what were all those math tests that I was so good at? Like, I don't even really remember that. Maybe it's just because it's farther <laughs> in the distance. But college was, you know, where I was like, okay, so I can just, like, make something up and do it? Yes. Amazing. That was yeah. I, I I connect with that uh, on a on a deep level. So I when I came out of high school, went right into college in Boise, Boise State, with a communications, not knowing anything about anything that I wanted to do, communications degree. About two years into that, I was failing out of classes like racquetball and stuff, mm -hmm. and it was like okay, this is obviously not the right time for me to do do college. So you know, I postponed it, and then eventually oh, I went see, to San Francisco. I see. Mm -hmm. And started up at City College and transferred over to San Francisco State. But what what I what I hear and what you were just saying that really hits home for me is I have the same realization the second time I went, which was, you know, it was a conversation I had with my wife where she was like, you know, you can go to school and get the education you need to like work with music pr production, right? You know, you can do that. And San Francisco State has this department because she's also an alumni. And oh, I had cool. never I had never made that realization that wait a minute. I could actually use school to train me to do the thing I really want to do. I, I saw it as like a, this this uh, way to get into some you know career that kind of like what you were talking about with math, something that I'm good at, but maybe I don't necessarily love it, but I'm good at it, and so yeah, that's my career, right? It's like I was it's like, like well, I can do fun stuff. Oh, okay. Exactly. There's a passion part of this. And yes. If anybody would have said like, "Are you passionate about algebra?" Right. I'd be like. Mm, no, I mean, I just, it's just like good to be like, I just get an A, Yeah, <laughs> you know, like that, right. that was fine, but it wasn't, yeah, like there was no passion there really. Yeah. I know that this sort of stuff, uh, it's useful later in life. You know, when people say like, oh, what, you know, when's the last time you solved an equation? It's like, well, it, it it sticks with you. There are there are ways that the brain works that I I understand. Um, you know it, it it it's it's still with me in some way. But uh, but yeah, I even remember. I don't know if it was my mom or my dad. It was one of them. And you know, starting college and and doing the math thing. And like, I think I like subscribed to the Economist or something. You know, uh, because I was taking a bunch of like that sounds he, like, mathy. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, I was taking like statistics classes, which actually oh. were fun classes. Um, yeah. But, uh, but you know, just, you know, a lot of probability stuff, you know, and, and they were both kind of like, so what is your goal? Like, what, what do you want to be a math thing? teacher? And I was like, not really. You know, it's like, well, what else, what, uh, what are you going to do? And I was sort of like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Haven't thought about that. <laughs> and the more I thought about it, the more I was like, I don't have a good answer. And I don't know what I'm doing. And now I don't want to do it. <laughs> you know, and, and I'm glad. I'm glad that yeah. uh, even though, I mean, I could go back to school tomorrow and totally jumpstart a new career. I mean, you know, <laughs> as long as I'm we living and can. breathing kind of thing. Yeah. But I'm glad that at that age, I was able to be like, okay, you you need to you need to follow something that feels passionate to you. And uh, production 
very much was. I thought I was going to be a music video editor and working at MTV. That's what I thought I was going to do. That sounds exciting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at the time, it was like, what's better than this? We just make nonsensical videos. (laughs) Right. Totally. As long as it's cut to the beat. (laughs) Avant-garde, weird stuff. Yeah, cut to the beat. And (laughs) and I, uh, you know, I didn't go in that direction either, but I also... You know, I still do some editing today. So it's like it all yeah. worked out. It all worked yeah, out. Yeah, for sure. That that those skills, that skill set, it's like a knife being sharpened over and over. You know, at this point, you're a you're a super sharp knife in, in the world of production. When you go back to like when you were younger, the, you know, talking about passion, do you look at your childhood and I like I realize you had an aptitude for math, but did you have a passion for technology? Was that there from a young age or did it that come was later? it was um although i didn't really realize it um i was you know you you get a lot of people who work in uh tech now who say you know i was shy in school you know didn't have a lot of friends mm. uh spent a lot of time by myself i didn't really have that experience like i don't think that you know, being a nerd, you know, or a geek or, you know, a lot of those labels really applies to, it applies to a lot of folks who have that shared experience of, I never felt like I belonged. And now I do because it's cool now. That Mm -hmm. just wasn't really my experience. I, um, uh, I mean, I'm an only child, so I did spend a lot of time alone, but my dad gave me well, he didn't give it to me, but it was like a tape recorder, like a like a Sanyo or you know some some just like little tape recorder. And mm-hmm. I mean, at a very early age, he just said he pressed record and was like, "Talk to it." And I mean, yeah. we have like, I mean, my mom's attic is full of these cassette tapes of me oh, at like two years old being like, that. "Hi, tape recorder." <laughs> Honestly, love it. You yeah. were podcasting it too. Totally, I really was. I really was. And then yeah, when I got older, amazing. I just I loved that stuff. You know, I loved, you know, everything to do with, you know, like like the the first CD player I got. I mean, I was just it was the most fantastic thing ever. And yeah. you know, I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, we actually didn't have a lot of money growing up, but I was like the first kid to get one. And it wasn't because like, Oh, I got whatever I wanted. It was because like, it was so important to me. You know, I remember one Christmas in, I guess it was high school, maybe a little, yeah, I guess it was high school. Um, and you know, my parents were like, what do you want for Christmas? And I'm like a camcorder. And they're like, Hmm. well, we're not, we're not doing that. (laughs) You know? And I was like, that's all I want. I don't want socks. I don't want anything in my stocking. I want a camcorder. I need a camcorder. (laughs) You know, and eventually I got a hold of one and uh, I was lucky enough in high school to be in a program that was, um, uh, I don't know if you had the, I don't know if you would have had this in Idaho, but it's regional occupational programming, ROP was like, Mm -hmm. it was like, there was video, um, there was also, you know, like future farmers of America also in that, in that it was, it was kind of like vocational training, but. Okay. In in certain high schools, there's a lot more of it now, but uh, video it does was, not ring a bell from my from my school experience. Yeah, one of those in my school was the video department, um, mm. it, which I was in, and I mean, we made music videos all day long. We hosted the uh, morning bulletin, you know, for the school mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. <laughs> they wheel in a TV. <laughs> <laughs> to every classroom and they're like, okay, we do this for 10 minutes. And then, you know, we talk about us history, yeah. um, like all that stuff. It, it was, Oh, I loved, I loved being the person who made like the perfect mixtape, you know, and people yeah. would say, oh, Sarah, yeah. s- have Sarah do it. She knows s- Sarah can plug that in, you know, that kind of stuff. So yes. So you um, were known for your tech technological aptitude as well. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. It was, and it was like, to me, it was like, I always, when I, when I mention people who say that, uh, being a nerd wasn't cool, it's because I really feel for that because I, I just felt like it was always cool. I felt like mm-hmm. it was helpful to others. You know, yeah. it was a good party trick, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. when I, when I could, you know, show people how to do something fun on a computer, 
which, you know, there wasn't much, you know, back in the day. Um, you know, they were like, oh, yeah. But it was Sarah, all new. Sarah has you know, a computer was, at her house. Yeah, Let's go over right, there. exactly. Yeah, like it was yeah. always, it was like fun and, you know, a bunch of discovery and exciting. So that, yeah. that again, even though it took me a while to decide, oh, I can use, you know, this passion to do mm. something with my life, um, that, that it started at a young age for sure. Mm, mm. When you were talking about the um, the audio cassettes that you have, and you know having boxes, I, I actually have a similar box. I have a box just filled with audio cassettes that I recorded. You know, late late elementary, junior high, along the same lines of what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And I never know what to do with those. Like, what what is your plan with that? Is it just they they hang out in your attic until <sighs> yeah, who knows I mean, when or like. Or do I, they need, does it need a plan? I mean, maybe it's just a piece of history and it, it can exist there and it goes, but there's so much there, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy to me. Yeah. I, the cassettes, I, this is actually something that can keep me up at night sometimes because I'm worried that they're going to degrade and they're just going to be gone. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. some of the stuff is just garbage. I mean, it's not, it's not sure. anything the world needs to hear, but, you know, my dad, who passed away in 2004, you know, he's on a lot of that stuff. Mm. And, you know, his mm. voice and just, yeah. you don't. That's gold. I mean, yeah. even even though eventually I got that camcorder and, you know, I have some some home videos, you know, the really early stuff, you know, yeah. I, I mean, I'm a baby. And my dad is like, okay, Sarah, we're recording. Like that kind of stuff is. Oh, that's if it's, so sweet. It's so special to me. Yeah. And I know yeah. it exists because I've heard it so many times. Not recently, but um, in fact, behind my setup right now is a closet that has a bunch of cassette tapes. They're in a box, uh, well sealed. And I'm just like, do they even play? I don't know. Yeah. I haven't I even, I haven't digitized them. That would be my plan is just like, get all this ish di digitized uh yeah. i don't even know where i would go to do that but somebody's gonna do it especially in la yeah. and then yeah. have it have it somewhere my mom even at some point she burned a bunch of stuff onto like a dvd that was old like super eight videos and you know even that i'm like that that technology is like that seems so old. Also, like Super where's that? Where you gonna play that on? Yeah. yeah, like I need. Yeah. I need it to be like in Google Cloud. Or something. Yes. Well, yeah. and that and that's so. I've I've struggled with this too. I actually did go through the trouble of pulling out that box of of cassettes and digitizing them myself. I had this like t this four track tape deck. So that allowed me to play both sides of the tape in one pass. And then, you know, on my timeline, oh, wow. reverse the uh -huh. two pair. And then I've done a tape in 45 minutes. It was still intensely time consuming, you know, because it wasn't just record it. Then you also have to save out the file and whatever. Yeah. And then I had a hard drive failure and I lost it all. <gasps> I still have the cassettes, but I don't You'd have, have to do it all again. I'd have to do it all again. And at a certain point, it was a really interesting exercise for me of, be, of letting go. It was kind of like, you know what? Like, even if I went through all the trouble of, of archiving this stuff again, who is it for? Is it for me? Is it for my kids? Let me tell you, at this point, my kids have very little interest in any of those cassettes. And I've, <laughs> I've posed it to them a couple of times. Maybe they will when they're later. But what it, what it brings to mind for me, and I'm cu curious to hear your thoughts on this, is, you know, um, our heirlooms and what we pass down to other people used to be tangible. And now it's becoming our digital heirlooms. And like... Yeah. What happens to our Google Drive when it's filled with all this stuff and we pass away? That that does that go somewhere or does that does that trail end there? It's just an interesting kind of conundrum, I think, from it, a, from that perspective. Yeah, I um, I agree, and and it's funny. So yesterday, <clears throat> Monday, uh, uh, September 9th, was Apple's latest announcement where they announced mm -hmm. new iPhones. I've got an iPhone that works fine, so I, I'm not upgrading. But, um, you know, a lot of that is like, you know, you know, best camera ever kind of thing. And yeah. cameras, uh, which is why I, I was interested in your studio setup, you know, have always been another passion of mine. In a different world, I would be like the world's greatest photographer. You know, I love photography, <laughs> yeah. took a lot of photography classes in school. 
Um, so, you know, I, I know, I know my way around, you know, a camera. And, um, when I was a kid, again, <laughs> Sarah, the weirdo, you know, I always had a camera, you know, and I took, you know, a million photos of all my friends at school. I not even, some of them weren't even my friends. I just liked to take like portraits of people yeah. and I've got photo albums full of that stuff full of it. And, you know, it's sort of like, do I scan this and send it to someone on Facebook? Because that's yeah, the only right. way I know they exist anymore. That's probably a picture that they would like. It doesn't do much for me, but it's like, yeah, who is it for really? And, uh, but that stuff, that stuff to me is, you know, those are the boxes that are still in my attic, you know, or my mom's attic. <laughs> or my yeah, right. or, or, the, or the closet in my house now. Um, the, yeah. That's the stuff that means the world to me. All the stuff that is on, you know, in my iCloud on my phone, which is like seven thousand photos, because I rarely mm. delete anything. I I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's there, it's fine. It's it mm -hmm. it doesn't mean the same to me, and I think that that makes me sound like an old lady, but. There's just, there's something about the old, the old way of capturing life because it was so much harder to do. Yeah. You know, right. to go to a barbecue and take, you know, let's say I have like, you know, a, a, like I was lucky enough to have like a film roll 36. So I'm like, I got 36. Yeah. You know, it's like, those are like, you have to like. Comprehensive. Yeah. You like <laughs> think about your 36. You know, yeah. and then you get it yeah. developed and you don't know what's going to look like. And then you get them yeah. back. A third and of go, them didn't turn out. And you, or, yeah. Or and you go through them. Yeah. And sometimes you're like, oh, my God, that's my favorite photo ever. Like that feeling. I don't know that that's a feeling I I I feel like is yesteryear for me. Yeah, it's it's kind of like back then, because the process was so entailed part of the process was the narrowing down to just the best and now it's so easy to fill, you know, a terabyte of cloud storage because every for every picture we take, we take 10 because space is abundant and it 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 just it loses that connection to that that forced um that 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 kind of forced process of how do I narrow this down to just the things that are important. I started um about a year and a half ago, I bought for my wife as a as a gift a recurring subscription to something called Chatbooks, which I know there's a million of these that exist, but it's essentially every month I go through my our photo roll and I pull out 30 of the best photos from the month and that gets printed out into a book and now we've got this whole volume of them. Oh, cool. And, it kind of it forces us to to kind of take a moment and take that infinite cloud storage of photos and turn it into something tangible so that at some point when those hundreds tens of millions i don't know how many digital photos i'm going to have in the cloud you know when i move on but instead of that being a, a work for someone else Here's just a, a bunch of books that are like the really good things, but it takes work and it takes time. And that's why it makes it special. That's why it yep. makes it more special. You no, know, I got you. I got you. I, uh, a friend of mine, when I moved from San Francisco to LA many moons ago, this is like not even the last, I don't know. I've moved a lot, but, um, yeah. this would have been 2016 and, you know, really, really good friend of mine. And she was super bummed that I was moving, even though, you know, it's short flight, um, but she she printed out a bunch of photos that we had taken over the years into a little little book. In fact, it's probably behind me somewhere. Um, I won't bore you uh, with on the, your inset you know, bookcase that's yeah, built into the wall. <laughs> right, right, exactly. But um, she made it for me, and I was so touched. And I was like, mm -hmm. "This is just." I mean. And they weren't even like the coolest photos ever, but it was like, remember that time we, you know, the burgers or, you know, we went to Amsterdam, you know, it was like yep, one of those yep. things. And I, I was just like, I can't believe you did this. That is so nice. And I mean, it didn't yeah. cost her a lot of money, you know, again, like you right. said, there are a bunch of these, you know, printing services online, but it, it reminded me of how, how thoughtful that kind of stuff can be. Yeah. Yeah, and how it, how nice it is to walk into a room. You know, now we have this. Um, you know, another gift that I got her like the next year because now we have this stack of books and know where to put it. Was this really nice? You know, made out of wood, kind of like uh, a bookcase essentially. This mini bookcase that sits on a table that has the whole volumes. And what I realized out of that is you walk into the room and you look over there and you see that little bookcase. 
I'm like, oh, I'm going to pull out one of those and see what happened, you know, in March of last year. Yeah. You know? Oh, I remember that yeah. trip. And I don't know, it connects you to the photos and kind of puts it to work again. You know? One of um, uh, one of my <laughs> – <laughs> this is this is really weird, but one of my favorite things is so my parents went to the same high school, and they like dated in high school, mm. and um, you know grew up together the whole thing. And both of their yearbooks, my mom still has, and I go through their yearbooks and I look mm. at like 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 senior year, like mom's yearbook, dad's yearbook, and they signed each other's yearbooks. And other people signed their yearbooks, but different people signed them, you know, yeah. and I look at the the photos of them, you know, in their the drapes and, you know, crazy hair and everything that happened in 1963. And I'm just like, it is one of my most prized possessions ever. Like, mm. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, where everyone's sort of like, you know, if something, if your house is going to burn down in a fire, what are you taking? I'm like, yeah. my parents' yearbooks. Boom. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah, that's so cool that you have such a deep uh, connection to something that probably meant a lot to them too. Did they know each other really well in high school? Or were they dating at that point? Did they even know that like their futures were in intertwined? They were dating in high school, and then they weren't, and then they did not get back together until. Well, they were 31 when they had me. So I think, okay, you okay. know, there was, there was a good decade of like, yeah. you know, life went in two different life directions happened. and then came on back. But, but it's, yeah, but it's but cool yeah, to they, have that document, right? Yeah. That, that kind of illustration of like, oh yeah, our lives were connected and then we had our lives separate and then came together and created yeah. this Yeah, no, it's, you know, it's, it's a total love story. But yeah, yeah those yearbooks. That's great. You know, that's, that's <laughs> me and them forever. <laughs> yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's wonderful. I really enjoy talking with you, Sarah. You're an awesome person, oh, awesome Jason, human being. Thank and you. I, yeah, I loved really this. This was so this. fun. Um, I know. And thanks I, for letting me just show. like flap, flap, <laughs> flap my mouth and not have to do a lot of research. <laughs> That's the beauty of it, right? It's like, yeah. just come in and like talk, be real. That's what I love about it. Um, and I want to, you know, obviously we talked a lot about Daily Tech News Show, so folks should go and check that out. But I also want to mention, you know, Apple Vision Show, which is, of course, this week very appropriate because Apple had its biggest uh, product announcement of the year event yesterday at the time of this recording anyways. And so, yeah, you're, you're doing this show with another one of my favorite people, Eileen R Rivera. And, yep. uh, I'm sure you talk, did you release an episode? Oh, you did an episode yesterday. We can make it purple, which yep, talks yep. about the event. That was, that was yesterday. Uh, Eileen and Amos and I, um, do the show every week. It's really fun. It's my newest show. Uh, we, we were, uh, what is yeah. it? 31 episodes in. Yeah. So yes, seems like a lot, but, uh, that, you know, if you do podcasts regularly, um, the number creeps up quickly. So, uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty it new. Um, earlier this year we decided to, to launch it. So we're, we're excited about that. And, um, and yeah, between Daily Tech News Show, Apple Vision Show, and Have Such a Good Day. I have my hands pretty full these days. Yeah. But I, you know, like we talked about earlier in this episode, I, I always have ideas. So we'll see. Yeah, I know we'll you see. do. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you for uh, for hopping onto my idea <laughs> with Techsploder and talking to me all about you and, and uh, where you've come from and everything. I've definitely learned more about you and I appreciate you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Jason. This was really fun. <laughs> All right. Thank you again, Sarah Lane. Fantastic time. I really didn't want the conversation to end, if I'm completely honest, but we had to do that. She had busy things uh, ahead of her with uh, DTNS. All things Texploder can actually be found at Texploder.com. And I say that right at the top because I just added all the video content from the YouTube channel to the page. So really, everything Texplodery can be found there, techsploder.com. This podcast premieres every Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on the Texploder YouTube channel, that audio podcast and the video uh, publishing to the site and the feeds later that day. Texploder patrons get exclusive access to the live pre-recordings of these interviews, as well as exclusive pre-show hangouts each and every week before the show. It's a lot of fun. 
You also get other things, ad-free shows, early access to my YouTube videos, a Discord community, and more. And finally, we offer the chance to be an executive producer of this show. And when you do that, you get a Texploder t-shirt, just like this week's executive producers, Bill Rudder, Jeffrey Maricini, John Cuny, Taylor Sunderhaas. Last week, I asked, can you put a fifth finger on my hand? And what do you know? You did it. Our newest executive producer, WPVM 103.7 in Asheville, North North Carolina. Good to have you over here. Also an executive uh, executive producer on AI Insights Patreon as well. So big time support coming from you. I appreciate it. Patreon.com slash Jason Howell to support Textbook directly. Thanks again to our guest, Sarah Lane. Thanks to you for watching and listening. I'm Jason Howell. I'll see you next week on another episode of the Textbook Podcast. Bye, everybody. Bye.